Hi everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I will show you how to crochet the Tweety Twig Cowl. This is an easy cowl to make. It's a simple, chunky lace pattern, kind of a fan, and it's closed with three buttons. And it measures, the finished measurements are eight inches wide and 32 inches around when buttoned. And the clever thing about this is, and makes it a lot easier, are the holes of these fans at the end make built-in buttonholes. So let's get started. For this project, you'll need one full skein of Lion Brand's Wool Ease Thick and Quick. And if you want to substitute yarn, that's okay. Just look at your yarn label for a yarn that recommends an N 9mm crochet hook and look for a similar yardage. The colorway shown here is the barley colorway and it's kind of a, a grayish brown with some flecks of tan, beige, and black. And it's very pretty and rustic looking. You'll also need three buttons. Because we have three of these fans across, you're gonna have three buttonholes, if you will. So you'll need three buttons. I have here a couple of examples. And what you'll wanna do is you'll wanna, before you sew the buttons, and I'll show you how to do that later on in this tutorial, but before you sew the buttons onto your project, you're gonna wanna make sure that they easily pass through the button holes. So I have here, this is kind of a wood toggle that I used, and then this is a, a coconut wood button, and you'll wanna just make sure they pass through comfortably. But you don't wanna make sure, I grabbed this one just to show you. This one is probably a bit small because it's so large and chunky. You don't want it to be so small that it's gonna fall through when you're wearing it and fall off. So you want the button to be substantial enough, but still easy enough to pass through the button holes. You're also going to need a nine millimeter N crochet hook. And a lot of people ask where I get this hook, just as a side note. And I got this from nitpicks.com and um, they have a lot of really pretty hooks, but um, just as a side note. And um, you also need a pair of scissors. And if you want to, uh, a lot of people like to measure as they go along when you're crocheting your piece to get it to the proper length. Um, you can use a ruler or a tape measure as an option. And, I used the full skein. Actually, this right here is actually all I had left over after crocheting the piece and sewing the buttons. So I used just about every last bit of this full skein of yarn. And this particular skein, this is the tweeds. Uh, some of the solids and the prints and the tweeds have different yardage, but this particular uh, tweed is 106 yards, just to give you an idea of how much I used. So let's get started. We'll get, clear some of this out of the way. We're gonna get started with our starting chain. Okay, so let's get started. This cowl is constructed, it's basically just a long, lacy rectangle. So let's move this out of the way. And I wanted to tell you, sometimes with the tweeds, some of these little pieces can shed um, off and um, land in your lap while you're crocheting, but that's okay. That's part of what makes this yarn so pretty. And this yarn is machine washable, so if you're getting a lot of shedding, just uh, try and launder it using the uh, directions you can find on the yarn label. So let's get started. We're gonna put a slip knot on our hook. To make a slip knot, wrap the yarn around your fingers and make a loop. Bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your crochet hook and bring up the loop just like that, then tighten. Our cow has a beginning chain of 14. So we're going to make a chain, wrap yarn around hook, and pull it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, whoops, 12, 13 and 14. This is our starting chain. And you don't wanna make it too tight because it's gonna draw in the bottom of your 
your piece. If you find that you're having a hard time with your chain and your chain is too tight, just go up a uh, crochet hook size, uh, maybe like a P hook and make your chain with the P hook and then switch back to the end hook and that will keep your starting chain nice and loose. And then work the rest of your piece with the recommended end hook for this project. But if you just do it loose, you can get away with that. So we're gonna begin our foundation row. This loop here on the hook does not count. We're gonna chain, we're gonna, um, excuse me, the fifth chain from the hook will work our first fan. So one, two, three, four, and five. This chain right here, we're gonna begin our first fan by working two double crochets, chain two, and two double crochets all in the same chain. To make a double crochet, wrap yarn around hook, insert it into the chain, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. Double crochet. We're gonna make another one. Just like that. Then chain two, one, two. Then another double crochet. We're, again, we're working this all in the same chain. Get some more yarn here. And then another double crochet. And we did that all in the same chain. So again, this is what our first fan is gonna look like. If we come back to our original piece that we've made, we're gonna have three fans across. One, two, three. And again, when these little things shed, you can just give them a good shake when you're finished your project or just launder them. So to move on to the next fan, we're gonna skip two chains, one, two, and in that next chain, we're gonna make another fan. Two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets again. So double crochet, double crochet, chain two, double crochet, and double crochet. And again, we're doing that all in the same chain. That's what's gonna give you that nice fan shape. So that's what our next one looks like, moving down the row here. So we're gonna skip two chains, one, two, and in that next chain, we're gonna do the same thing to make the last fan on our row. Two double crochet, Chain two, two double crochet, Get some more yarn here. There we go. So we have three fans, one, two, three across. To finish up the row, you should have three, <clears throat> you should have three chains on your hook. So one, two, and then in that very last chain, you're going to work a double crochet. So your foundation row will look like this, and this will later become that buttonhole row as well, kind of doubles up. So let's move on to row one of the pattern. To so move on to row one, we're gonna chain three. One, two, and three. Then we're going to turn and we're going to work the next row of fans into the top of each of the fans from the previous row. If we go back to our finished piece, you can see that the fans are stacked all the way down. So in the pattern I refer to this hole here as the chain two space because it was formed by making chain two from the previous row. So we're gonna do the same thing. Double crochet, all in the same chain two space. Double crochet, and double crochet. Chain two, some more yarn, and then double crochet, double crochet, all in the same space. So you can see our fans now are stacked. And what I like about this cowl very much is even though the yarn is very bulky, 
we're creating all of these decorative holes. So when you wear your cowl, that's gonna give you warmth, but also a lot of nice ventilation. So let's work a fan into the next space. Double crochet. And again, you're gonna fly through this yarn ball very quickly. I like these projects. They make me feel very accomplished when I use so much yarn so quickly. Chain two. We did two double crochets, chain two. And then double crochet, and then double crochet. Same thing as before. So you can see it's starting, the lacy look is starting to build. Okay, and then in this last fan here, we're gonna do the same thing. Two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets. And in the previous row, when we made our chain three, turning chain, and then turned our work, this is the chain, it's gonna kinda of be off to the side, so you're gonna to have to look for it that first time. So just, um, just go off to the side there and find it. But we're gonna work a double crochet, just one double crochet, right into that turning chain space, okay? So it's gonna kind of look like that to begin. So to finish your cowl, we can set this aside for a moment. To finish your cowl, you're just gonna keep repeating the row we just did over and over and over until you get a total uh, measurement of 32 inches or until you run out of yarn. But be sure and save yourself just a little bit to sew on the buttons. So I forgot to mention earlier, but you're also gonna need a tapestry needle to do your finish work. So we're gonna remove our hook from our little swatch we made here. I just wanna show you how to weave the ends in. This is very bulky yarn, so you wanna give it a little twist. And thread your tapestry needle. And then you can just run it in to your row. I like to go in one direction and then bring it back in the other direction, just to kind of lock that into place and keep it from unraveling. So we're gonna give a little tug, trim with our scissors, and our end has disappeared, okay? Now let's go back here. So when you finish your cow, you're gonna have two different looking ends because we're working in a fan sequence. Your starting edge, where we started, down here, you can go back to the swatch and see, it's gonna be, have a straight edge. It's gonna have a flat edge. That is the edge you wanna sew your buttons. The other end, this will be the last row you complete. You can kind of see how that takes place in our little example piece. It's gonna have that pretty scalloped edge. This is gonna be your buttonhole edge, where you're gonna put the buttonholes. Or we're not, we're not putting the buttonholes, they're already there, I should say. But that gonna, that's gonna be our buttonhole edge. And it's also, when it's folded and buttoned, it's gonna have a nice, pretty finish to it as well. So let's put this aside, and I just wanna show you how to sew your button on really quick. So what I did to, to figure out where my buttons went, I just kind of laid it like this and laid the edge over it, and that helped me determine my placement. I just kind of eyeballed it. I didn't get too technical on that. So we're gonna take our tapestry needle and a piece of our scrap yarn, and I don't wanna use the whole thing, I'm just gonna cut a piece. This is about 12 inches or so. Oh, it doesn't have to be exact. And we're just gonna thread our tapestry needle, and then figure out where you want your button to be. I'm gonna put mine right there. Another thing I wanna mention is when you're picking your button, make sure that you pick a button that your tapestry needle and your thick, thick yarn can easily pass through, okay? It's really heartbreaking when you pick your buttons and they're the perfect button and then you go to sew them and it's impossible. Um, there are ways around it, but just it just makes life easier. 
So just place your button where you want it to go. Bring your needle up. I like to use matching yarn just to make it look nice and finished. And you'll want to spend lots of time on your finish work. It makes a huge difference. So we're just going through here a few times. I think twice is plenty. Just attaching that button. So you can see how nice and matched that looks. Okay, so just flip it over. You can tie this closed. I like to do three knots, that's just me. So then we're gonna weave those ends in, just like we did earlier. You're gonna weave in any ends also that remain from when you made your piece. So we're just gonna do it the same way. Come in from the opposite side, just like that. Trim. Each button will have two little tails that you have to weave. Takes a few seconds. I know weaving in ends isn't everyone's favorite activity, but it is important. Just weaving in the other one. So it looks nice and finished. Okay. We're just going to trim the tail of that. So our button is on there. So you just repeat all the way across, just like that. Okay, I just use wooden buttons because my yarn was kind of rustic, but there's millions and millions and millions of buttons. So you'll be able to find the right button to match your yarn. So that is how you crochet the Tweety Twig Cowl. And you can wear it a bunch of ways. You can just button one or two of the buttons and wear it almost like a little capelet. You can button them all and wear it like a nice cozy cowl. And it's super easy. It took me just, I think I made mine during the length of one movie. So it's a, a nice project for the weekend and it's a nice cold weather project as well. So that's how you crochet the Tweety Twig Cowl. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the red subscribe button to get all the latest Fiber Flux video updates. Thanks again.